So the final thing we're going to look at in this chapter about solutions is movement of solutes and solvents across membranes. And we're going to be most interested in cell membranes because the focus of this class is um, physiology related chemistry. So a couple of terms we need to know before we draw a big cell with things around it. Um, reminder about the term diffusion. Diffusion, you know, is if you're cooking something in the kitchen, the smell eventually works its way all throughout the whole house. Um, it's the net movement of particles from high concentration, that's the kitchen, out to wherever those good smells are not. So the living room, the patio, the bedrooms, um, something at high concentration without any energy will spread out. Um, another term that we want to be familiar with, which might be new to you, is osmosis. And that's going to be diffusion of usually the solvent. So we're going to see that happening um, with our blue solvent particles across a semi-permeable membrane from less concentrated solutions to more concentrated solutions. And once we have a picture, I think that will make a little bit more sense. Um, these other two terms we'll get to as we develop our picture. So as I draw, I'm going to use some small solute and some big solute particles and then solvent. Um, and I'm going to draw a very giant, very blue um, blood vessel here. So imagine that there's blood here, blood plasma, all the things that you would find in blood. And then I'm going to draw a cell membrane here. And this cell membrane is what we call semi-permeable. So it's going to have some small holes in it. Um, this semi-permeable membrane here, semi meaning kind of or partially, um, semi-permeable membrane has small holes in it. And if you look over here, you can see that small solutes and water would be able to move in and out of those, and the big solutes would not. Um, so it's only permeable to small um, things. So if I can add some of these um, solutes on here, um, inside of the cell, so this could be any cell, we'll talk a bit about red blood cells on the next slide, but we're going to have some solute like, say, sodium, and then we also have sodium out in our blood vessels. And I'm going to try to roughly make the concentrations look the same inside and out. When the concentrations look the same across the whole picture, um, that's called an isotonic solution, iso meaning the same, that prefix. So I have the same concentration of salt inside or sodium inside as I do outside. Um, there will be some large solute particles inside and also some large solute particles outside. Those aren't going to be able to move across those small holes, um, but these small solute particles, because it's isotonic, um, they're going to be moving out and they're going to be moving in. There's a dynamic um, shift of those particles in and out. There's also a bunch of solute. So this is getting really colorful, just bear with it. But lots of water outside the cell. And also lots of water inside of the cell. And again, because these solutions are isotonic, um, that water is small and it's going to be moving out and in um, of the cell. So we're going to, um, in these scenarios here, um, we're going to compare the concentrations. So we're going to compare concentrations, or truly we should be talking about osmotic pressures, um, but we will take advantage of the fact that often those numbers are the same. So um, we'll talk about concentrations, and we'll compare those concentrations inside of the cell and compare them to outside of the cell. Um, inside of the cell, we call those intracellular fluids, and outside of the cell, we call those extracellular fluids. So we just want to compare concentrations inside versus outside, and we're going to do that more on the next page. So we've got basically three different comparisons of concentrations across membranes that we want to look at, and we're going to take a minute to sketch each of these out. Um, you should be able to sketch these. You should also be able to recognize and predict what's happening. And you should also know as we're drawing some movement here, we're talking about the net movement. So overall, if I average out what happens over a period of time, this is the overall movement out or overall movement in. So um, with these isotonic solutions, like we saw on the last page, um, here are the concentrations that are isotonic with 
um, extracellular fluids. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and draw here our first um, type of solution. Um, and we're, we're looking at what's happening outside of the cell. So here's my cell. And it should have some small holes in it to make it semi-permeable. So let's add a couple small holes there. Um, these concentrations, this would be the IV solution, and the IV solution would be going into your blood. And these concentrations that are in the IV fluid match exactly with the concentrations, if we made this a two, concentrations of what's in the IV solution. So what does that mean graphically? I have my solutes. I have solutes outside and the density of those or the concentration of them is roughly the same inside and out. Um, when it's roughly the same inside and out, I say that this is an isotonic solution and that means that I've got water moving in and out and I've got solutes moving in and out um, and everything stays balanced. So if your cell sits in this solution um, for a while, um, the cell will remain exactly the same size. So that is ideal if they're just wanting to hook you up to an IV so they can add a drug to it or a painkiller or something. They would use isotonic solutions um, so that they don't change your cells at all. So a second scenario doesn't apply to me. I don't run marathons. Um, I run much less. But say you run a marathon, you make a bad decision, you only drink water. Um, and there's no salt or glucose in it. Here's what it looks like if you look into your cell. So again, semi-permeable membrane in my cell, so make a few holes in it. Um, my cell is the same as it always is. But then I drink only water, and so this is what's going into my blood. And so I'm gonna have a whole bunch of water, lots and lots of water and almost no solutes at all. And so the result of that is my solutes would try to flow out, would diffuse out to lower concentration. And then my water actually says, oh man, there's a lot of solutes in there. And the net movement of water is into the cell. So water moves into the cell and this kind of solution would be called a hypotonic solution hypotonic solution. And hypo is a prefix that means less than, like hypoglycemia means you have low blood sugar. Um, and so the net of a hypotonic solution is that my cell starts to fill up with water. And so after a period of time has passed, then I would say that my cell swells. If it's a red blood cell, then I would um, say it could even burst, and that would be hemolysis. Realistically, swelling on its own is bad enough. Um, if you have this actual scenario, um, you start to have swelling in your brain because your brain cells swell up, and that will give you all kinds of nervous system issues. So hypotonic solutions, net movement of water is in, and the cells swell up. So the final scenario we're going to look at is um, this year we have COVID-19 running rampant in the world. So to try and get away from that, you go to a desert island, you forget water, so you start drinking ocean water. So we know that's a bad decision, but let's look at why. So here's my cell. It's got some holes to allow some things in and out. Um, inside my cell, standard solution, some solute, some solvent. And now um, we're going to ignore the glucose, but we start to drink that salt water, which is about 3% sodium chloride. So that's going into my blood. And that is much higher than the 0.92. So that means we end up with tons and tons of salt finding its way into our blood. So it's extremely salty. Um, there's still some water, you know, you're still drinking some water, but we have just way more salt than we normally would have. So a couple things happen. Um, the salt is gonna diffuse in, but what we're most interested in is our solvent moves by osmosis out of the cell to try and dilute all of that super salty water there. So we start to have water moving out of the cell, and as a result, my cells shrink. So my standard little cell here starts to shrivel up because all the water is leaving it. Um, in a red blood cell, we call that crenation. 
Um, so those are a couple of vocab words you might see. So isotonic solution, my cell stays the same. Um, hypotonic solutions, my cells swell. I've heard people say that this is like a hypo-hippo. Um, and then crenation um, happens or shrinking happens when I put my cell into a very salty solution. So you don't want to drink ocean water or run away to a desert island. Um, so let's take a look at a couple quick applications of this and then we'll be done here. Um, so consider a human cell placed in each of these solutions. Will the cell stay the same, shrink or swell? And you might want to talk about the movement of water also. So um, where is osmosis happening? So if I compare um, a cell, this would be my kind of picture here. If I have a cell and these are the solutions that are inside of the cell and then I set that cell in a 10% glucose solution. I've got 10% glucose outside and only 5% glucose inside. My solvent is always going to move to try and dilute that um, higher concentration. And so here I would say that the cell will shrink as water moves out. So you might want to revisit the sketches from the last page. I'll leave those for you to practice. Um, here's another example. And I'm going to leave that one for you, but I want to finally look at dialysis, which is like what you looked at in lab seven. Um, so in dialysis, we've got a membrane and we've got two solutions side by side. We've got the patient's blood, and then we have it next to what's called the dialyzing solution. And there is a semi-permeable membrane between the two. Um, so the patient's blood contains really high levels of sodium chloride. So that's really high levels of solute. And as the physician, um, you want to get the sodium chloride to leave the patient's blood. So the question is, what should I put in the dialyzing solution? And the answer is probably not much salt at all because I want that salt to diffuse from high concentrations to low concentrations. So in the dialyzing solution, I want low NaCl concentrations. You may not want to leave it pure water because you might send the patient into some distress if you pull too much salt all out at once. And dialysis takes hours because they have to work slowly and filter all of your blood. Um, but you would definitely want less salt in the dialyzing solution so we can pull it out of the blood and clean it. So I'll give you a couple more to think about and that wraps up our solutions chapter.